So why do you think I won't make it? Will you do anything to stay sober? Anything. I swear it. You have to follow all my rules and regulations. No picking and choosing. Well, why don't you tell me what I'm about to get into? First, you gotta call me every day. Mmm, that's a toughie. No matter how you feel, like you really want a drink, or you feel like Superwoman, you gotta call me. Fine. I think I can handle that. Number two, meetings are not optional. How many AA meetings have you been to this week? Well, this week was a little tough. You see, I just got back from Hollywood, and I had a lot of social and business obligations I had to take care of. How many? One. You do 90 and 90. For the first three months, you go to at least one AA meeting a day. No excuses. Every day? You want me to go to a meeting every day? How can I do that? I have a restaurant, I have daughters, I have hey. friends. You just swore you'd do anything to stay sober. Sobriety is number one. Without it, you got no daughters, no restaurant. All you got is one ugly drunk staring you in the face. You hear what I'm saying, sugar? Oh, yeah, I hear what you're saying. So, any other conditions you want to run by me? You go to one meeting a week with yours truly. And you do service work down at the soup kitchen. What do you mean, service work? What, do you need my staff to go? Is that it? Your coffee's not bad. That'll be your job. You show up once a week down at the meeting. Make sure you have a lot of hot java. And don't forget the sugar. Because some drunks love to pour on the sugar. Is that it? Nope. You stay late and clean up. You know what? I can't stay late. And I can't clean up. I haven't got the time. Well, maybe you can send your maid. And she can keep you sober, too. Let me tell you something. I can never guarantee to you that I could go to a meeting every single day. I have a full life, for God's sake. I have family. I have friends. I have a contract with a publishing company. I write books. And I have obligations and things to take care of that you couldn't possibly understand. Oh, yeah. I could never, ever follow your rules and hey. your conditions. Then you're wasting my time. I see you on Skid Row. Bridget, can you talk to uh, Alistair? Oh, that man, he's like a stone. Nobody could get along with him, I'm telling you that. Well, I tried. Oh, how I tried. It oh. was worth a shot, Bridget. Ah. But you know, there is something very funny going on in the house. What is it? Well, it, it was Miss Amanda. I think there's some kind of secret thing that she's doing for the senator. Did you ask her where Grant might be? Yes, I did, but she doesn't know. But she is going to get another call from the senator. And so if Grant is actually talking to somebody in Bay City, that means that somebody in Bay City knows where he is. Yes. Wish. Uh, What's that paperwork you wanted on Ian Rain? I want you to keep in radio contact with all the roadblocks, all, all right? right? No! Do it! Listen, Bridget, um, you better get back before Billy comes into the office again. Right. Thanks for all of your help. I appreciate it. I don't want to get you into trouble, no, dear. I'm not doing that. Listen, if Grant slips up, we're going to find Vicky. I promise you. I just wanted to do something that would be good, you know. You already have, Bridget. You already have. Amanda. You got the list to my supporters? Yes, Alistair was very helpful. Amanda, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, but all of this has to remain off the record. Everything we say has to remain strictly confidential. Don't worry, Grant. You can trust me. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate your concern more than you know. Listen, I don't know if this is important, but when I was at your house, I ran into Bridget. She was asking where you've taken Vicky. I see. I found it odd she didn't. Well, to ensure Victoria's safety and privacy, I've kept her whereabouts a secret. I'm sure the press will be hounding even her loved ones. I thought it best that not even they know. I certainly understand about nosy reporters, but friends and family... I can't take any chances, Amanda. All right. Now, if you would start with interviewing my allies in the Senate, try to gauge any political fallout since the shooting. I'll get on it right away. Uh, where can I get in touch with you? Is there a phone number I can reach you at? No. No, I'll call you. And if you need to get a hold of me, please leave a message with my Washington office. All right. Amanda, one other thing. If Ryan calls you with any questions, I'm sure you'll be discreet. 
Why are you worried about Ryan? Well, it's just that he might want to come visit, and I wouldn't want Ian Rain to follow him. Of course. I know I may seem overly concerned about security, but Victoria is my first priority. You cannot tell me that no one answers the phone at the police station. What happened? Nothing, nothing, really. Where did you go? To the police station. I probably ruffled a few feathers, but I swear I'll protect this family if the police can't. Well, did they have any news on Ian Rain? Ian is still out there. Ryan has been assigned to the case now. Well, at least that's a step in the right direction. Is Pauline up yet? Well, Allie said her door's still closed and she hasn't heard a peep. All right, I'll go up and check. Give her my love, okay? Yeah. I have to go to work. Okay. Hello, Amanda. Come on in. Just the Corey I was looking for. Yeah. It's a hot day. Yeah, it is. Did you come over to take me up on my offer for a dip in the pool? Oh, no, I can't stay, but uh, I'm due in court. Oh, okay. Well, what can we do for you? Remember the last time I was here, I said we should get together sometime? Ah, uh, yes, to compare war wounds, Yes, right? yes. Well, now that Lorna and I are history and your divorce from Sam is final, I was wondering if maybe we could spend an evening together, you know. No, no big deal, just fun. I think we both could use some. Yeah. Well, um, since you've come all the way over here in this heat just to ask me, the least I can do is say yes. I'm not going to sit here and watch Felicia crash and burn. You're right. Let's go. Well, I'll drive you home. No, I don't think so. I'm going to go check on Jenna. Hot enough out here for you? Hi. Do you know what day it is today? Yes, I do. I can't believe that it's been a year since Daddy died. Can you? I found him. I don't think you heard me, but I kept on saying that I was going to be a really great daughter and take care of Felicia. Boy, I've done a real bang-up job, haven't I? Wait a second. None of this is your fault, Lorna. You know something? It's the anniversary that's probably making things so difficult for Mom right well, now. Well, I can't really blame her. I know. She is fighting so hard. I, I just can't imagine dealing with so much pain in Mom. Well, it was always Lucas's love that kept her strong. Then let's ask him to give her some support right now. I don't do prayers. Well, you don't have to believe in God or go to church, you know? You could just... Feel his spirit and, and talk to him. I mean, I feel him all the time, don't you? Come on, let's just... Please, Daddy. Give Mom the support and love that she needs to, to get through today. Come on, Luke. Keep her going. close last night to, to taking a drink. So close that I could even taste it. I didn't. But the truth of it is, is that I'm a total failure when it comes to, to trying to beat this thing. Say, nobody ever makes it alone. Were you ready to try it yeah. together? With all my rules and regulations? We're probably going to kill each other, you know that. <laughs> well, what the hell, huh? Hey, here's my phone numbers. The first is my home phone. The second is the hospital where I work. And the third is the soup kitchen where I do volunteer work. Call me. Any time, night or day. You need me, call me. 
I want you to know how much this means to me. Hey, the universe does not revolve around Felicia Gallant. Sponsorship works both ways. I need to stay sober, too. Thanks. 